Okay, here we go. I want to introduce us to some new instructions. And uh, these instructions are going to be necessary moving forward to complete our shop job. So it's very important that we understand these. Um, and they're used quite often out in the field. That's why it's so very important for us to understand them. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is in a global category called one shots. Now, in, in all reality, when I push a button down, um, a student might think that that button is, uh, becomes true for a scan and then goes away. In all reality, when I push on a button, it comes around maybe seven, eight, nine hundred times and reads that button being pushed down. So if I had that button pushed to some sort of operation, like adding one number to another, it's going to do that addition function eight, seven, eight, nine hundred times. And that's not what we want. We want on the button push for it to add the number one time. And then we would have to release the button and push the button again for it to add the number a second time. So we're going to incorporate this into a little example here. So I'm going to show you a couple different instructions. Um, but the first one is going to be this one shot that I'm speaking of. Now the one shot comes in a couple of different flavors. One of them is called OSR and that's the one we're going to look at first. Uh, so I'm just going to use the the green push button, what would normally be green. This the normally the first normally open push button, uh, which is the fifth one here. Okay, and so I'm just going to say this is a normally open push button. Okay, yeah, and then I'm just going to say add. <clears throat> just just to make it clear that I'm using the normally open push button there. Okay, and then I am going to use this one shot rising. So underneath the bit tab, we uh, by default it comes up with this user tab in the forefront. If you come one over, it's the bit tab. And we're going to go to this OSR, one shot rising. Okay, and what this does is it is trying to trap the actual event of that button being pressed, but only for one scan. So I'm going to use B3 colon 0 slash 1 in that location. I'm not going to put anything on there. And I'm going to say B3 colon 0 slash 0. And I'm going to say... Uh, Add pressed. Okay. Okay. So what this instruction is doing is when this run goes from false to true, it is going to make this B300 true for one scan only. So like I said, if I push down the add button, if I even hold it down for, you know, as fast as I can get off of it, you know, push it down and let go, I, I've still, the scans are going by so fast, I probably still have 10, 15, 20 scans go by. If I uh, want to add one number to another number once, uh, that's not going to work for us. So this is only going to come on once, and I'm going to have to actually completely let go of the button and then press the button again uh, to get this bit to come back on. So how is that going to be beneficial to us? We're going to come down here. We're going to learn about another instruction as well. We are going to use that B30 slash 0. Okay. So that add button was pressed. And we're just gonna we're gonna add uh, a couple numbers together. So now we get to talk about a different type of register. So there are 
integer registers. What is an integer? An integer is a number that has no fractional component. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those are all integers. Integers can also be negative. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, those are all integers. Um, uh, and an integer cannot be 1.5. Uh, it can't have any fractional component. It has to be a whole number. Um, so that is our definition of an integer. And our integers, if we wanted to store them away, go into this N7 file, the integer file. So this is going to hold a value. I can actually change this value right now to 23. <clears throat> it's going to hold some sort of numeric value in there. So those are locations, much like we had for the timer and the counter. They're just locations for us to store numbers, not bits, but numbers. Okay, so... Uh, keeping that in mind, what I want to do is add two integers together. So I am going to come over to our math function. <clears throat> so there is a compute math tab. And underneath there, the very first option is add. So I need to give my focus down here and then say add. <clears throat> and what it's going to do is add source A to source B and then it's going to store whatever the resultant is in this destination. Well, if I just say N7 colon 0, that's going to be my uh, place that I'm going to store value into. And I just want to add 2 um, to it. And then I just want to store it right back in N7 colon 0. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll come back here and we'll change this to 2. Actually, we'll just leave it at 0. Okay. So it's at 0. Uh, there we go. 0. Okay. So <clears throat> all we're going to do in this simple little program is push a button. This is going to make sure that whatever uh, action is tied to this B300 that the action is going to happen only when I push the button for the first scan. This this will become true and I'm going to add it, when I very first start 0 to 2 and then put it back in that N7. So let's download this and look at it. Okay. And that's fine. <laughs> So we're in a running program here, and if I push my add button, we're going to see that it's going to take, there's a lot of values here in this add. This, this is the actual uh, configured number that is placed in each one of those. This little caret here means that's the value that is withheld within that number. So <clears throat> N70 has a value of zero in it right now. In fact, we can go ahead and open this up and keep an eye on it as well. So N70 has a, uh, a zero in it right now, okay? And that's what this little caret, the number with the caret next to it. Two is a constant in this case, so two is always going to be uh, placed next to that caret, and then this will give us the resultant value here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and push the start button one time. And if you notice, it just took our value of 0, and it added 2 to it, and then it stuck it back in there. But if I push this button again, I'm going to push it and hold it down, and you're going to notice that I do not uh, keep adding the value in there. I have to expressly let go of the button and then press it again. Now, this is happening because I have this one shot in there. Now I'll show you what happens if I don't have the one shot in there. So let's come here and go offline. And all I'm going to do is take my address here and I'm just going to move it down here. Okay. So anytime I'm pushing the button, um, it's going to do the add function. The only problem is, is when I push and even if I push and let go quickly, 
it's going to add that number in there a bunch of times because the PLC is so fast, especially with a program this small. Okay, so now when I push on, I'm going to push it and, um, and not not try to get off as fast as I can, but just like a normal push that an operator would uh, would do. And if you notice, we're back to zero here. We can go ahead and look at our our register here again in the in the in that window, and you can see that it's zero. Okay, so I'm going to push this like a normal operator would. So <clears throat> we were adding two every time. So the amount of scans that went by uh, during the time that I pushed that button was about 638. That's, that's roughly half the, the number here because I was adding two every time. If I was adding one every time, you would know how long that I actually held that button down. So that's how fast the PLC is. That is why we need to use one-shots. The one-shot, it makes sure that it is only the down press of the button one time gets me this value to come on and then uh, we only add that number one time and I have to let go of the button and then come back okay so that is our definition for a one shot well a one shot rising so let's uh, let's change this back Uh, to uh, having this address over here, okay. So we'll, we'll be back to our first demonstration, okay. So now what I want to do is use the next instruction that uh, is available to us under that one-shot umbrella, and that is the one-shot falling, okay. So uh, what we're going to do is right click this and say change instruction type instead of an OSR we want to OSF okay so a one shot falling is going to do nothing on the button press but it's going to do something when I release the button I have to go from a true to a false for this to happen okay so I'm going to go ahead and download this So we're going to look at our integer again, and we're at zero. Okay. And so I'm going to press the button, and I'm going to hold it down, and you're, you're going to notice that uh, nothing actually happens. Okay, so you see that the value still hasn't changed, but now... Watch what happens when I let go of the button. Okay, so this instruction will trap the value going from true to false. Remember, one shot rising was from false to true. In this case, it's going to be from true to false is going to invoke the uh, bit, this output bit to uh, be set. Okay, so those are two. Uh, options that you can use in uh, future shop jobs. Um, so that is the explanation of the uh, one shot falling and one shot rising. So our one shots and our uh, math function of add. I hope that helps and we'll see you in the next video.